So I've started working on the tables for this van and we're planning on having two smaller tables using these um, lagoon style legs. It's a bit of a challenge finding places to mount them but I think the first one we're actually going to mount to the front of the passenger seat. So I've taken this bit of trim off, I'm going to trim out some of the plastic underneath and then we've got a large metal spreader plate which will then bolt, um, the bolts will go through the plastic trim and then bolt onto the back of this spreader plate. So I've just sat in the van um, doing some more planning and thinking about how to put the second table in. We found we're going to need two tables to try and get a decent size gaming and eating area rather than one massive table which I think would just be unwieldy and in the way most of the time we're going to do two smaller ones. Yeah, sometimes I just find just sit in the space we're working on and then um, try and get a bit hands-on um, and see if we can come up with any ideas. So let me show you what I've got. So we've already got a table leg base on the front of this double seat so when it swings round we'll have one table leg about there. So then we need a second one so there are a couple of options one is to attach this table leg to this wall like that now that gives us a a good distribution of kind of where the tables are spaced out because like this this is the other option here but when it's like this it's very close to that one so my first thought is putting it there is a better idea but this is where sitting in the space and thinking about its use comes in to its own. Because what I realised is, if our girls are sat in the back here, if we had the table leg in between them and the table spaced out away from them, it means they've got a platform where we could potentially put um, an iPad or speaker or when they're a bit older, they can play games on it whilst we're driving, but it's out the way. And then this one could swing across swivel lengthways and then that would make a good table for whoever's in the driving seat and in this seat and then that one works for this one so actually this makes more sense it's a bit more work because there's no structure for it at the minute but I can build something out of the aluminium extrusion and screw it down into the floor um, which should work quite well so I just need to kind of fine-tune that come up with a suitable frame and it should be good so me and my little helper are just trying to work out <clears throat> how best to put in these two tables two table legs and I think this is going to work quite nicely because this gives us a table from this seat to that seat and that one gives you a table from that seat to that seat and potentially that seat could help and, it, and a unicorn could help so another day and another seemingly over complicated solution but it's all coming together now I'm trying to come up with a mount for the second table leg we've got the first one there the second one's going to go in between the seats there but I need to be able to mount it off something so putting together this little frame doesn't weigh a lot but trying to get a 45 degree joint in this aluminium angle is really hard I don't recommend it if you don't have to or buy a proper bracket because drilling a hole at 45 degrees is really really difficult even with a pillar drill and a um, machine vice they just don't like it because the drill bit uh, all my drill bits are uh, cut at a standard 60 degree angle and so they just try and skip off like that anyway it's by the by I've managed it so I'm just trying to plan out not just how do we make it strong enough so this is its rough layout and then it's going to have this bolted on there all the load is going to be towards this back edge and I realised originally I had shorter legs that ended about here but if I put them out here which is still behind the front edge of the seats it's going to be about there it moves the pivot point that bit further forward thus reducing the load on any screws going down into the plywood and into the battens below it so as well as that I've, I'm going to put some screws in here but I can't get my screwdriver to them because this bar's in the way so planning for that this 
bar here and here is removable because I've used some smaller T-nuts. Um, this bar will go in the back and will help space that. These here will help space this. So when you're working, well even if you're working with timber, you need to think through how am I going to assemble this together? Am I gonna, is it going to work the way I want it to? Am I going to get myself in a position where I've got an impossible screw to get in? Would it be easy to put brackets in? I could have put L brackets on here, but they're just not as clean. They don't look as smart, so this is why I've gone this route. Anyway, I'm going to go off, drill some holes in these, reassemble it, and then I'll show you all when it's back together. So here we have the finished table mat. It does look fairly hefty, but it's all aluminium, so it's not too bad. It needs to be fairly hefty to be able to take the leverage you get from the table. So let me just, uh, I'll mock it up. I'm going to have to hold it up because it'll fall over until it's screwed into the floor. So here we've got the table leg mocked up in position. Uh, and you can see it. Oop, there's my cup of tea. You can see it in relation to where the other table's going to sit. I need to have a little play around now with this position because it's not actually screwed down yet so it will fall over easily and once I'm happy that we've got the right position I can uh, screw that part down to the floor and we can make up some cardboard tabletops to test it out. So I've been um, playing around with the tables <clears throat> and I've got some cardboard that I've made up tabletops on and uh, so I'm just playing with the different positions to make sure that each position you can get in a posi uh, place where you can eat comfortably off the table and also that you can get in and out between the tables so uh, what I'll do is I think I'll chuck this up on a tripod and then uh, film or time lapse me showing the different positions and orientations that the tables can be in because it's Really, really impressive actually, I'm, I'm really chuffed with it. So this is how the um, frame and table leg look before they go in, before I screw it down. It's finished off quite nicely with some little custom 3D printed end caps. Um, here I've got holes that I can't get at, but what I'm going to do is take this support and this support out, screw it down into the ground and then put these two back in. And then it's going to be nice and stable into the floor and be able to support the weight of a table and people eating dinner off it. So here you can see the <clears throat> usefulness of T-nuts. The reason I haven't used T-nuts on most of the build is because these are only M5. This particular profile isn't wide enough for an M6 bolt. An M5 is uh, it's a little bit weak. So for a majority of the construction I've used the, coach, the M6 coach bolts. But for something like this where I need it to be removable... I've got some M5 T-nuts, uh, yeah, T-nuts, you can just loosen them off, he says, can't do it while I'm holding the camera, <coughs> okay, I'll go check that, oh there we go, once it's loose, well I can get in there now, um, I'll do these extra screws down to the floor and then put these two parts back in place. Frame is now robustly screwed down. I'm actually able to rock the van trying to shake this. So I'm happy that's going to be able to support the table adequately. Uh, so I will probably, I'll tell you what I'll do, I will put the seats back and then just show you a quick video of how you would attach the table to the base.
So I decided to do a little bit more work on the shapes of the tabletops themselves. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that <coughs> I'm thinking is that if we put a tabletop that can mount on this side somewhere, it needs to be able to... I want it to be able to be the same height or similar height to the worktop. But if it overhangs the leg, it'll hit this. So that made me think, oh, I could trim it down a bit. So I actually trimmed this one to be uh, the re a rectangle of the circle, if that makes sense. So if the centre point of the pivot is there, I just traced off the bottom of this. And it gives it a reasonable shape, although I need to just, on the final ones, I'll round those corners off. And that gave us a good position for eating between this seat and that seat because that seat can slide in and out on the rails this seat can't slide in and out and this one can't and they're a little bit further apart so this tabletop is longer and offset so I can show you here if we so if I hold the camera straight over the top the pivot points somewhere around here so at this end you can see that it's short of here and then if we spin it around then we can see it overhangs it and that <clears throat> gives you quite a nice position I've sat in both seats and it kind of with it all slightly angled and especially because you've got this nice curve on here it gives you a good seating position where you would comfortably be able to eat a meal from so uh, I think for now that is the development of these tables done because we haven't got the lightweight ply to make these tables. Thanks everyone for taking the time to watch this. This has been quite a good fun project actually. Um, I've not seen people use two of these legs before although I'm sure it's been done somewhere and I'm really happy with what it's going to allow us to do with enabling four or even five people to come and sit around and play games or eat together. If you like what you've seen please do like the video, comment below, tell us how you do it differently. Um, <clears throat> any thoughts on tabletop shapes? I haven't got them yet, so we can change that. Uh, and if you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell icon too. Thanks.